Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. Of course, it's the fan favorite segment, the fan zone, and we're discussing about the fixtures lined up today. I understand Manchester United will be up against Chelsea at 7.30 p.m. Sugar is celebrating, hoping that they will continue with their good form against PSG in midweek Champions League and win against Chelsea. It's at all odd. And remember, two hours early, of course, it's the El Clasico, Real Madrid against Barcelona. People are saying on Twitter that how come since Cristiano Ronaldo left Spanish La Liga, there's no hype and marketing as far as this game is concerned. Joe Saina alongside Maureen Mudoni are joining us. Maureen, good to see you. Long time. Two years down the line. Where have you been? <laughs> Hey, long time. You look different, you look big, you look... Uh, <laughs> we grow, we grow. So, uh, I had taken a break. Uh, there are things that I had to do. Life happens. So, um, that is settled. Now we are here and we catch up and the show continues as, as it used to. Congratulations. And yeah. We don't uh, disclose details as true. <laughs> as, as <laughs> Why? Yes. I'm congratulating you. Joe, yes. you've been in Narok and you know Narok sportsmen are crying foul that, you know, the county government is not coming uh, to their, you know, plight. Mm. Uh, people are saying that they are not being recognized, no talent is being nurtured. What's happening in your home? Tough. I, I think it's just mismanagement. We, we have been talking about grassroots and how grassroots should be developed. Unfortunately, when uh, election time comes is when you start having small... Uh, mini tournaments here and there, but <laughs> from from, from the, politicians, from, from the politicians, the prize money is ten thousand. Yeah, not even the aspirants, the politicians who have been there. You know, you have a, you have a cabinet secretary, you have you have a sports department, but you look at uh, the infrastructure, you look also at the contribution to the society. It's a failure, to be honest. And um, I hope they do change, but if they don't, we will bring up the change because us as the people of Narok, we want a better management of sports and all inclusivity of the youth. But as for now, the struggle resumes. Case in point is, you know, the uh, brother's team was him who mm. participates in 4x4 challenge off-road event. Of yes. course, Deepak Kray and his brother uh, Manish. Manish. Despite yes. the last services they offered mm. uh, five years down the line, no payment and, 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 and they have been doing the county proud by uh, representing them. And you see that, that we, we talk about tourism and sports being hand in hand. Once you bring certain sports to a place like Narok, which is next to the Masai Mara, you promote the tourism, you promote the economic growth. But however, when you get certain individuals who decide that they are not going to pay up and who decide they are going to play cat and mouse games with a team like was like was in whereby, whereby they are just trying to make sure that narok is seen as a destination for four by four sporting for rugby for football for netball every other game even cross country but once an institution does not recognize that it's doomed for failure and, and it's very unfortunate. And of course, talking about Deepak Rai is a good friend, of course, our condolences as he continue mourning the death of his mother who passed on last weekend at Mpisha uh, in Nairobi, of course, due to lung complications. A uh, good man when it comes to matters, you know, Rhino Charge hmm. and Off-Road Championship coming from Narok, doing very well as far as, you know, the 4x4 challenge in Champagne Park at Kipeto is concerned. Of course, those of us who are proud to be attending those high-end events, you know. I'm kidding anyway. Maureen, good to see you. So let's talk about uh, international football. First of all, the anti-police protests in Nigeria. We've seen Odion Igalo, the United forward, alongside Pierre Emerick Obumayang, the Arsenal compatriot, condemning what is happening. I don't know. How well can football be used to bring to an end the situation in Nigeria? Uh, it is very unfortunate, Maxwell, that uh, an, an African country uh, in this day and age has gotten to that uh, using force uh, and, and executing its own citizens. It's, it's really unfortunate. And it's good to see. One thing about football is that it's, it's not just a sport. It embodies the whole humanity. And the good thing with these footballers is that they have a certain reach or they have a, a following of their own. So using their voice uh, to let know what is happening is, is important. I have also seen uh, one Bisaka coming out strongly and saying, look, oh, 
as much as we are doing this, we need to stop. Uh, we also have these things happening, not only in Nigeria, even in Congo, only that in Congo it hasn't been as publicized as it has in, in Nigeria. And it's it's very, very unfortunate. What I like about these footballers is that they, 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 they realize that as much as uh, we, are, we are getting our life on in a different continent, as much as we are in Europe, Africa is our route. Most of them are not even like born Africa or, or so. They just they just associate themselves with, with their countries and it's important that they use the platform they have because they have a huge reach they use the voice that they yes. have because they tend to be listened to uh, the police will see it's not just us the, the Nigerian citizens that are concerned it's not getting the global attention and once they do that they have a following and uh, you, you, you never know your voice his voice Igalo's voice uh, Bailey's voice well, once it comes together you never know to what destinations it reaches and I'm glad that they are not ignoring what is happening in Nigeria and they are speaking against it as much as anybody else would because it's it's really brutal it's it's brutal and it needs to stop so we have to keep hashtagging uh, and to Nigerian yes, protest yes. Joe you know uh, you know besides being a football on the pitch there are those things there is immense contribution you should play as a, a soccer star of football, like what Marcus Rashford is doing, trying to push UK Parliament to ensure that free lunch is given to the poor mm. and the needy. Of course, he's been praised, he's been given an MBE mm -hmm. for his last year's work of, you know, the sporting scene. Do you think the entire global world, just like Maureen put it, if it joins hand football world, then the situation that is happening in Nigeria will be something of the past? Because we've seen a lot of superstars mm despite you know their a uh, scintillating kind of play mm. on the pitch they are re they rarely talk about what is happening off pitch mm. cristiano ronaldo you'll find him rarely talking about what is happening in nigeria yeah but now is it high time footballers join hands yeah i, I do believe so because um, if you look at uh, this movement that is happening right now in the premier league no to racism okay and they're taking a bow they're taking a knee um, there is this idea of even uh, black, uh, black, uh, black Europeans or black American coaches being pushed to higher levels in the coaching system. If, if, the, if just the UEFA and FIFA can combine and say no to what's happening in Nigeria, it can go a long way in making sure that whatever is happening in Nigeria stops. It doesn't stop. It will be a proper movement. You put in the African Union. You put in again the asian union in terms of the sporting in terms of the football combine them together and say no to what is happening unfortunately the world is not as we would want it to be whereby not people are very individualistic in terms of their opinions on what is happening in other areas and they do not want to get involved remember these footballers also have sponsors the likes of adidas the likes yes, of nike. nike the likes of under armor those sponsors or those corporations do not want to be involved in any world politics or economical politics. This wants to make sure that their brand is seen. We are selling our brand. And you as Cristiano Ronaldo, you as Lionel Messi, you as Aubameyang, you as, you know, all these other stars, you as Ibrahimovic, we see you as our brand. Other matters, please keep away. And that's the unfortunate bit about, inter about world-class footballers. Last night, Bamford scored a hat trick against, you know, Aston Villa. Despite what they did to Liverpool, you know, uh, a, a huge demolition got them in the hands of newly promoted Leeds United under Marcelo Bielsa, a team that has been doing very well. Are they the new Sheffield United or probably Wolverhampton Wanderers who will finish in top 10 immediately after their promotion? Because they are doing pretty well. You remember how they started the league campaign with 3 all against uh, reigning champions Liverpool and Maxwell that's that's the beauty of of the Premier League you exactly cannot predict what is going to happen in whichever game uh, when that game started Leeds versus Aston Villa uh, you almost could feel like um, this is a team that had beaten Liverpool for how many goals they hit Liverpool for seven so you'd almost think it's going to be straightforward yes. uh, 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 for them but uh, obviously now it happens it happens the opposite uh, what I like about these, these these teams that are getting promoted is like they, they come with a certain mentality that as much as this is this is the Premier League and it's the epitome of football uh, we have a chance uh, we, 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 we 
fought through championship and here we are and they fight it with the whole spirit it's it's not about the big names for them it's not about the it's not about the, the 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 stadium it's not about it's not about football for them they play for the badge and and, and that's the beauty that's the beauty of of, of this game uh, Leeds United had 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 struggled in the in the, in the championship but it also came through very well uh, if you if you have a, a, a small history with Leeds United you realize this is a big club it's not just another another a uh, Wigan mm. or so mm. to say it used club. it used to be uh, a dominant force in the 90s uh, face to face with Manchester United so it's been like 16 years since they were relegated and now that they have come back up, I'm, I'm extremely uh, uh, pleased to see them to, to see them play uh, in such a style. And it's, it's, it's not just about uh, uh, scoring goals or what they play with a certain swagger, and it's entertaining to watch a Leeds game. Yeah, they came uh, against Liverpool in the first game, and they are, they are not afraid to give it a go. It was very unfortunate that they, they drew three three, but at, at the end of the game they had they had to lose. Uh, but they haven't they haven't let that get into them. And I'm excited about Bamford. I'm excited about Aston Villa. Uh, you can see combination uh, what Grealish is doing in Aston Villa. I'm happy that that boy uh, signed a new contract. I, I understand he was wanted by another an, another club somewhere, but mm -hmm. he, he he put pen to paper and said, you know what, I'm I'm, I'm committed to this club Aston Villa almost went down actually almost at the, at the, at the final game yes. last season so uh, for him to say now this is home he's a Villa boy a Villa Park is home and to pen that contract for me that's important because it also shows that uh, besides money yeah you know uh, players will go here they are chasing money but Grealish says besides money I'm here to play for this badge and that sort of encourages the team so um, Big up to Aston Villa. Uh, the the arrival of of Ross Barkley has also uh, helped them because that that combination is also working out very well. Um, uh, Leeds again also to see uh, the Argentinian uh, also coming up very strongly against very strong team Bielsa. I'm also excited. So uh, the the league is wide open. You look at Leeds, you look at Everton, you look at Liverpool. You really don't know where you want to place your money, and that's the beauty of the Premier League. Joe, when you are starting. Uh the campaign of English Premier League. We mentioned about Marcelo Bielsa mm. and his pedigree and reputation. How he's among the top coaches in the world despite having been in the championship coaching a team in the Sky Bet. But now he's back in top flight and you remember a lot of uh, words of praise for him from you know, veteran coaches, mm. Alex Ferguson, mm. Sen Wenger, Jose Mourinho. A lot of huge respect for him from these uh, also equally high profile coaches. I don't know what will be his impact in EPL? It's going to be major, obviously. Um, I looked at, if we go back to the game that they first played with Liverpool, the 3-3. Yes. Um, he came in with a 4-1-4-1 formation. Now, skeptics will say it's a very defensive formation, but he played to his strengths, and just the same way he played last night to his strengths. Wing formation, counter-attack, when you don't have the ball, you defend in numbers. When you, when, when you have the ball, they go ahead. Bamford was at every time that ball was going to the wing, Bamford was already in front. And he was being criticized that he cannot take this team. And so they brought in Rodrigo. But now they've realized that they can use Bamford in this style of play and still use Rodrigo in the possession style of play. Why? Because Rodrigo holds up the ball and can easily distribute it to any of the attacking midfielders. So he's bringing in something different. Pep Guardiola actually said the revolution of set up formation in terms of formation set play that Bielsa has brought to the game is second to none. He, he even quoted, uh, very few people can even talk about what he's done against the likes of Johan Cruyff who brought the Cruyff system against the likes of Sir Alex Ferguson who believed in the 4-4-2 system. Yeah. So you look at it at what Bielsa is going to do this season with Leeds and it's really unfortunate that I believe a bigger team will come after him. <laughs> and, and that is notwithstanding that the gentleman cannot even speak a word of English, mm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and hopefully, 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 hopefully we we'll learn. So, yeah. Arsenal are up against uh, Leicester tomorrow. They just won in Europa League, but you know, predicaments of one method, Ozil continues. He took to Twitter mm. explaining the situation at the Emirates, how he's been left out of the team that will play the entire season in English. Premier League by coach Mikel Arteta. You know a lot of tribulation surrounding uh, Ozil. You remember his, his frustrations at the national team yes. when German performed horribly bad 
during the World Cup and of course the attendance by Turkish Prime Minister yes. during his wedding that fueled mm. animosity and his condemnation of you know, how Muslims were being mistreated in yes. China. So a lot of talking points surrounding Mesut Ozil earning 300 thousand pounds per week mm -hmm. but not playing active football for the last few months just being left out of the squad day in day out and mm -hmm. he's decided to speak out is he seeking sympathy from the fans is he is he realistic that it's high time you know he gets playing time uh, one thing you you have to agree Maxwell it's that uh, this is not uh, suddenly happening to Ozil it has been uh, a gradual decline from when he came to Real he was an excellent player then he went declining declining down the down the radar and uh, once Arsene left because uh, Arsene for some reason had a sympathetic eye for, for Mesut uh, I remember a certain interview that Aaron Ramsey was giving before he went to Juventus and he was saying that um, he was like the sort of, of, of the teacher's pet, like every time uh, you'd see Ozil with, with, with Venga, he was in the office asking for this, asking for that. Uh, he was the player who was getting extra days off and here and like that. Uh, so once once Venga left, I feel like that's that's when it all now started, uh, real, uh, I mean, realizing to, uh, Ozil started realizing that, oh, this is the Premier League. He doesn't have the physicality that the Premier League demands. O o Ozil's armor uh, was, was the creativity that he had. And that's, that's what he had going for him. So when Unai Emery came in, uh, he looked at him, gave him a few games here and there, and then uh, gradually Ozil just went deteriorating, and then Ateta comes in. So what happens? Uh, this player is starting to use uh, the sympathy card. Uh, you remember he's on a 350, I think he's the highly, most highly paid Arsenal player as we speak, 350 a week. Uh, that, that's not small money. And what he's trying to, to do, you see that he's saying, oh, uh, Arsenal is saying, oh, we are going to lay off 12 players, and uh, the 13th player is going to be our mascot. Uh, so they're saying, uh, and, and Ozil comes out strongly and says, you know what I'm gonna uh, as long as an Amazon player I'm gonna get uh, money for, for 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 the mascot so he doesn't have to go and that 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 sort of um Create a camaraderie with with, with 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 his with his fans, and they're feeling like this guy isn't too bad. So as much as uh, the the politics surrounding Ozil's situation, you cannot again. Um, you cannot again disregard the fact that he has Turkish roots. I think his his mother or someone mm -hmm. was ha, has some Turkish ha, Turkish roots. So the same way you cannot tell Igala not to associate himself with Africa, it's the same way again you cannot come in and tell and tell Ozil. Now look, you have to you have to disregard your roots, and this is Germany, this is England. So uh, uh, that whole scenario for him appearing with the with the Turkish guys didn't really uh, come off as as something that you need to bring now onto the pitch. Uh, however influence it had, uh, Ozil also speaks strongly against the Muslims reaction and all that and all that. I don't think all that had anything to do with the situation on the pitch because as much as you are a player, so why is he allowing uh, the likes of Aubameyang, the likes of uh, Lacazette, the likes of every other player in that 25 uh, months code, why is it that I'll take a look at it and say, ah, no, you know what, Ozil is not a player I want to, I want to, to, to bring on. It's because of his attitude. Yes. How committed is he to this team? It's because of his body language. Uh, once you see uh, as, uh, Ozil on the field, you're almost likely to say, ah, this team is going to lose because he's not as committed to, to, to this club as everybody else. As much as he's trying to do damage control on, on social media and pulling out that PR card, it's, it, it's not coming out uh, right for me because as a player you need to do the talking on the pitch let people judge you uh, let, let don't don't come out strongly uh, I mean uh of saying why you need to be on the squad. Let the manager have a headache of why you shouldn't be on the squad. Just before we get Joe's opinion on the same, of course, messages coming in through M and James from Mombasa. Hello, guys. I'm Timan United all the way. All the teams are called United. We <laughs> <you> win. <laughs> Best of luck, boys. Rest in peace, Chelsea FC. Wow. Very true. Two, three uh, in favor of Man United. United is the big team. Chelsea we will beat them as usual. That same man, James, he looks a day at support of United. Matthew Beth, Captel, watching live from Captel. Nanti, thank you, man, for watching. Keep your predictions coming through as well. What do you think about the upcoming fixtures? And Ivasha Kamere is well represented. This is Archie, based to Avasho. Rash Bashir, where Busia also watching from Busia, Charity Maina. 
tuned from Nakuru. Because you keep them coming through. Let's talk about what is happening to Ozil, his tribulations as well. Princess Kenya from Darasha, Juja, tuned, watching live from Isiolo, the earphones. Where RuPaul from Nyeri. So, a lot of messages coming through. Hashtag touchline Y254, Y254 channel at Wasike Maxwell. We're still talking about Mesut Ozil. Do you think Mikel Ateta is beyond him? And maybe it's boardroom decision to have Ozil out of play and maybe we're just blaming uh, Mikel Arteta over nothing. Yeah, I think, I think let's, let's take things back. Because Arsenal, mm -hmm. they don't want to lose their Chinese business market mm -hmm. following Ozil's condemnation of you know, harassment of Muslims in China. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's, it's more to... Yeah. <laughs> so if you, if, if you look at it in hindsight, let's take away all this political, all this worldwide pressures that are going through Ozil. Let's put Ozil as an attacking midfielder. The Ozil that we know who is an attacking midfielder. Let's go back to history. Is we've he still world class? We have had we have had issues with David Beckham. We have had issues with Nicolas Anelka. We have had issues with Paul Pogba, and now we're having issues with Mesut, Mesut Ozil. Yeah. Okay, last year we had issue with Granit Xhaka, but that again was mended even after he even booed and he threw his hands to the fans. Okay. Point of the matter is you're paying someone 350,000 pounds to stay on the bench. This is an issue that even Sanchez had at Manchester United. So what is the way forward? You either play this guy now in the cup games, which you have the FA, which you have Europa the, League. the Europa League. He's and not you also been named in the Europa League squad. So now, yes. mm. the, the other problem is what happens in January? Because right now the window has, has closed. And did you, the international did you want to leave? I believe he wanted to leave. It's just that his wage bill was very high and he did not want to take a pay cut. Now, this is the unfortunate part. So now, the, the international window is closed, but you still have the domestic window. Can you get a loan move? A loan move guarantees you playing time and your club will still pay your, will still pay your wages. Or look to January whereby you'll get a transfer. But he needs to get out of Arsenal if he's not going to get playing time. And regardless of whatever he's done, whatever he has supported, I still believe Ozil has a lot to give to the game. His game, actually, I look at it, I look at Giffy Sigurdsson, I look at Jack Grealish, I look at all these small players, creative players. Yes, he doesn't have the strength to mash up with the rest, but if you look at his style of play, I think he can still give some sort of percentage in terms of contributions to a team. But he has to move very fast because you remember his, 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 his age is not again for him. That guy is like 32. Hmm. Is, is it so he has to he has to really move fast because is, is, does he have a lot of, of playing time left uh, for the him? The CBI will so be good for him. And because time is not on our side and mm -hmm. we don't want to exhaust uh, the issue of Mesut Ozil, of course a lot of fixtures uh, lined up this particular afternoon. West Ham up against Manchester City mm. and Michel Antonio. Of course, he's been in sublime form of late. He's scoring. The goal is scored on 17th minute. That goal, uh, that game is currently underway, and it looks like West Ham want to pull a surprise mm. against, you know, the Etihad mm. based club. And of course, Fulham will play against Crystal Palace later on, then United up against Chelsea at 7:30. Joe. Well, it is it is a matter of form. Okay, uh, it's a matter of four matches. United are going to this game having won two games. Okay, Chelsea going to this game having defensive frailties. It has been documented that you put in too many new players into a new into a team, you will have problems when they're staying when they can't gel together. However, they still have brilliance going forward in terms of Chelsea team of Warner. They still have the presence of the defense, which in, now it's a bit shaky. But I believe after the Sevilla game, they were they were not at par. As the Chelsea we know, but at the Sevilla game, I believe they are going to beef up their defense. For Manchester United, we realize that Twanzebe can be a very good defender who can replace Harry Maguire. Okay, now we are not dis we are not disputing what Harry can do as a defender, but we can see that if something happens to Harry, we have a very good defender. Attacking wise, they are firing on all cylinders. Today, Cavani can make a debut. We can have a goal from Cavani. All I'm saying is that this game is going to be a high-scoring game. Why? Both defenses are not up to shape. Both defenses are not up to shape. United with Axel Twandebe and Victor Lindelof looked, you know, good combination. And like that of Harry Maguire who has been, you know, blowing hot and cold and, you know, people calling him a fridge, the English mm. overrated, mm. lots of bad names on his name, getting <laughs> the media, the media. during <laughs> uh, uh, UEFA Nations League tie. 
of England. So, Chelsea, on the other hand, of course they have Thiago Silva from Paris and Germain, but their defense has also been shaky. Mm. You know, at some point, the German international, Anton Rudiger, being told to leave because he's not in the plans of Frank Lampard. You see, the problem there, um, and sorry for interjecting, and is now that we don't know who is the uh, back partnership first pair for because, Chelsea. Because now, if they are going to play, a four, if they are going to play a four at the back, you know, you have Chilwell and you have your, you have, um, and you have and Dela, James, uh, and right James on this other side. So now, your your central defenders are they going to be ball playing defenders or are they going to be destroyers? Ball playing defenders initialize the attack if you're going to do a possession game and that's something that Thiago Thiago Silva is good at unfortunately for Rudiger and for Christensen and for Zuma those are destroyers they do not contribute to the overall gameplay their game plan is simple to defend so now what is the risk do you pull Kante back to cover when Thiago goes forward and where does Jorginho play at that Again, time you see at that time uh, is it that James will come in and Chilwell will come in to cover? It all depends on how Frank Lampard puts this team together. Unfortunately, I'm not the Chelsea coach. But if you look at those but options, you would see, you would rather, if you're going to an attacking game like the Manchester game today, you'd rather put two destroyers. Why? Because all your players will be bombing forward to try and score. Team of Anna up front, ZH. Behind him, mm -hmm. Mason Mount. Mason Mount that, on the side. Of course, ZH is ZH still sidelined. Yes. Kai Havertz. Yeah. Uh, and you saw what you saw again. The blunders. You see what Havertz, the Havertz, the blunder he had made for that goal at the, at the weekend. Again, by the time attacking players are coming to defend, and they're not used to defending, you love a catastrophe. Let them play at the attacking end. United. Now, who should they play in their midfield? Because. Uh, during PSG game, Paul Pogba started on the bench. He came in as a substitute. Van de Beek is yet to start. Of course, always coming in as a replacement. But we saw Scott McTominay and Fred combining very well. But every day is not Friday. I don't know today. <laughs> <laughs> what is the approach of Oleguna Solskjaer? Uh, Maxwell, what I'm excited about today is that uh, we have come to the realization after the, after the PSG game that you really don't have to build your, your defense around Maguire. And, and that is one of the things that has, has been given OGS a headache. Like this guy came with, with, with a very high price tag. Does he want to justify his decision of having to uh, have spent all that money on this guy? Or does he keep him on the bench uh, following his, 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 his deep in form, his international embarrassment? Does he keep him on the bench? And, and now I say, let me have to do with, with, with a different player. What I liked about the PSG game is that uh, Axel uh, Twanzebe comes in and then you have one Bisaka, you have Lindelof, and these guys actually played for that shot. Uh, not, only, not only was our defense very solid, but uh, we also had our attack firing in all cylinders. McTominay and Fred held that uh, position. Oh, just our. Oh, you support United. It's a coincidence. <laughs> I'm hosting two United fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, need, I need to tame the duo. I think, I think, I the, know, I, I think the Chelsea me. fans are okay with me today. <laughs> I've defended them very well. So what, what needs to happen today is that um, the problem with Chelsea now, on the other hand, is that as much as they have uh, very many players that are good, have they had the time to gel together? And and that is also giving Frank a headache because uh, you have to see Mason Mount has been playing out of position than what we used to see him play. Uh, uh, Pulisic is also now again not being very accommodated very well in the, in the squad because if Pulisic is not going to play on the left, where does that leave him? Uh, Frank is, is playing Mount, Mount on the right, so that means that um, Pulisic now needs to find another position. Where does Ziyech come in? Uh, again, uh, the combination of, of, of Havertz and, and, and Timo, how well are they going to, to, to gel? How, what time are they going to get? Uh, but uh, obviously we saw Timo uh, coming in with his two goals. Uh, something else that might, must be exciting Chelsea fans, and they have to agree with me, is that they better see Peter Cech on the, on the goalpost and not see Kepa. But uh, <laughs> they, they, they have now, someone has come because in, they have Because by Mendy. the way, Peter Cech has been recorded 
gold I don't know why yes what are, what is happening is that uh, you look at the COVID situation and I listened to Frank ex explaining the, the whole the whole uh, situation you look at COVID you, you never know what is going to happen uh, the goalkeepers at their hand they have they have Kepa who no Chelsea fan want to see they bring in Mendy and now they have they have Willy Cabello on the bench and uh, they are three so Peter Peter looks at it like the way the way goalkeepers train they train very closely because you can't train with the social distancing and all so what happens if all your goalkeepers are, 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 are go down with, uh -huh. the, with the virus so yeah. he has to have an emergency backup and that's allowed because uh, Peter Cech after 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 leaving Arsenal he came back to Chelsea not as a player but as a technical advisor so he's on the he's on the background uh, telling when uh, Mendy uh, coaching and everything giving technical advice to the to the guys in the board uh, to the guys in the field so even Mendy is able to learn uh, from from Czech so if the, these three goalkeepers go down with the virus and and and, and Frank has no goalkeeper then you can always have 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 check coming but that is not something you expect to see tomorrow so uh, we're just hoping that they are going to have have plenty of time so uh, that is a boost for the Chelsea fans because uh, the Kepa was, 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 was letting in every manner of goals. And so what I keep saying is that a defense is as good, is as strong as the consistent uh, back four that it has. So if you're going to have uh, Thiago Silva playing with, 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 with uh, Rudiger or he's going to play with, with Zuma and Zuma is coming along very well after his loan spells, you're going to have to be consistent. Uh, if, if you're going to have uh, your, your attackers going forward, you're going to have to be consistent with the defense. And that's the way they communicate with, with the goalkeeper. So if you're going to have Mendy in between the sticks and he has kept two clean sheets so far in, in his start, something Chelsea fans are, were not used to. Uh, so that is going to also play to play along a, a big role in how the other attackers are going to go forward. And so who is Frank going to settle on as his centre-backs? That's very important because those are the two players that communicate mostly with Mendy. And who are going to be his wing-backs because Frank wants to play... Um, people who are going to to fire from from the wings so that is also now going to determine how well this 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 chelsea squad uh, goes forward fair enough super saturday it is because el classic is also on at 5 yeah. pm east african time madrid up against barcelona i was reading bleacher reports yes. uh, yesterday and you know gerard Pique, the veteran defender yeah. uh, is full of defense for lionel messi because of you know, the rebuke and condemnation is receiving of late, mm. saying that people should stand by him ahead of the Classico. And, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo left. Mm. And you see everyone now thinks that, you know, Ronaldo was the hype and marketing aspect around El Classico because a lot of football fans even don't know that there is that game today. Mm. I don't know. What are the permutations? What, where, where do you place your money? Because well, Barcelona is not equally doing very well, and so is Real Madrid. Well, Real Madrid are coming back after two losses from Cadiz and also from Shakhtar Donetsk. And which the was, Shakhtar one was so embarrassing. Which was a, which was a surprise. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It yeah. was a surprise because it, it, there were injury hits. The Shakhtar team was not full. So um, you come after those two losses. And Barcelona also had didn't have the best of... Um, uh, best uh, best of uh, fixtures when it was the weekend, but they did very well in the middle of the week. Uh, this team, it's a, the, the name of that team is really hard, and I'm going to challenge anyone who's seen this right now. The team that played against uh, FC Barcelona, if you can guys can describe it, please send it in to us. <laughs> uh, your voice note, and let's hear. But uh, it was a very good game because you would see the the interactions between Leon and Messi. And at and Fatu, uh, you could also see how Princiao on the right was operating. Um, Coutinho again coming back to the squad and making sure that you know what, yes, with the absence of Griezmann, that team can still get goals. With the absence of Luis Suarez, Pranish actually did a very good job in the midfield. But my problem is that once all this is said and done, you know, the greats, whether it's Messi, whether it's Cristiano Ronaldo, that cannot be a topic until today. We are looking at the future, and the future is Vinicius Jr. in Real Madrid and Fatu in Barcelona. That's where we are. Yes, marketing won't do very well for them. Because, because the they two, not, Ronaldo yeah. and Messi, have dominated yes, Spanish football yes. for close to a decade. But now, with the games going on and having these new young guys coming into the fold, I'm telling you, it's going to be something different. For me today, it's going to be a stalemate because um, they will be so eager to defend more 
Real Madrid and not lose because that will hit pressures in Zinedine Zidane. But I expect Barcelona to play to their strengths. Your prediction, you didn't say what you expect. Oh, my prediction is 2 1 Barcelona. 2 1 Barcelona, how yeah. about United Chelsea? United Chelsea will be a, lo a good, a good 3 2 <laughs> to Manchester United. Why? Because there will be so many goals, and I'm a Manchester United supporter. Or oh, you're not trying to practice objectivity? Objectivity would be a draw, but there's always 90 minute plus. Yourself, Maureen, <laughs> predictions for La Liga and the tie between United and Chelsea? Uh, given that Real Madrid is going to, uh, to Camp Nou, I give that to Barcelona. So they, they are going to win 3-1 uh, oh. for, for that. So what we're over, Palenny, over, over. So coming to the Chelsea-Manchester United game, I also see a high-scoring game. Uh, if you want to put your money on Rashford, definitely he's going to get a goal today. Unfortunately, we do not have Anthony Martial. Uh, if Cavani starts, uh, we'll see whether he gets a goal. But I give it to... And I'm worried to say this because our home form has been not been so good, but I'm going to give it also a 3-1 Manchester United. Disclaimer, those predictions do not necessarily <laughs> reflect the position of Y254. <laughs> and if you are an investor outside there and you're placing a bet, <laughs> be responsible for any outcome. <laughs> <laughs> or probably just ask for the, uh, their contacts and <laughs> let them be held accountable for their misleading predictions. Anyway, it's been a pleasure doing this every Saturday. One, two, three, touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasike, Joe Saina, or uh, usual and residential face on the show, alongside Maureen, who was missing in action, but she's back and back uh, with a style. Of course, doing this, putting matters into perspective as far as what is happening in the world football is concerned. Let's continue talking. Hashtag touchline Y254. Of course, West Ham against City still one nil in favor of the Hamas. And of course, Let's continue talking and see what happens uh, as time goes by. Of course, La Liga at 5 p.m., Real Madrid against Barcelona, and also United up against Chelsea this particular evening. Leicester against Arsenal tomorrow. And of course, how about we enjoy the football? Club football is back, and we continue talking. It's been a pleasure having you on board. Thank you for coming through. Pleasure. Pleasure. Okay, have a good weekend. Stay safe.